George Lucas, uh, the director uh, of the film, was working upstairs in his house in the attic, editing the picture, and I was in uh, a side room, um, which was the uh, where I was editing sound. So uh, they'd converted, he and Marcia, his wife, had converted this house uh, into a film place where you could work on film. The machines were a Nagra tape recorder and a Sennheiser 415 microphone and a, uh, a portable film transfer machine so I could take what was on quarter inch tape and re-record it onto 35 millimeter film and a moviola which is what we use to sync up the sounds uh, with the picture um, and a, that's basically it. A, an editing bench with rewinds and a, a, a synchronizer machine to keep all of the tracks in sync with each other and uh, you know very very primitive technology by today's standards and yet you know you can do anything with any technology if you pound away at it long enough and besides that there was no alternative that was the only way you could do those kind of things back then I was very influenced in the early 1950s by the French music concrete school the, who were people experimenting in the early years of the um, tape recorder, the idea that you could take ordinary humble sounds and treat them as instrumentation and build uh, music, even quasi-symphonic music, out of the ordinary sounds uh, that uh, we hear every day. I saw it as an opportunity to do for film the kind of things that my heroes, the Music Concrete School, had done without any image. So I thought of the soundtrack as a kind of prolonged Music Concrete uh, composition that would occasionally find uh, points of synchronization with what was going on with the image, but not necessarily, so that the image could be doing one thing and the sound could be off here doing something else. And because this was an imaginary world in the future, we were permitted to do that, so to speak, because the, the realities of the shooting were that it was mostly shot in real mid-20th century locations. The, the, the as yet unused uh, underground system in San Francisco called BART, the tunnels uh, and all of that. Uh, so the thing that mostly would propel it into an imaginary place in the future was the soundtrack. The original original story was something that uh, Matthew Robbins and I wrote as a student film project. And like all film students, we were doing multiple things at the same time, and then we got interested in another story, and we backburnered this story. And George had... Uh, who was at film school with us at the same time, had linked up with the Navy school. The Navy was putting military people through the film school at that time for the Signal Corps. And they had huge budgets, uh, and they could use color film, and they were in another world as far as we were concerned. But George linked up with them somehow, and none of them had any idea of what to do creatively. They just wanted to learn how to thread a camera and, you know, and so George thought, well, I'll, I'll write something for them, for us all to shoot. And then he uh, found out about this story. And he said, are you ever going to do that story? And we said, uh, you can have it. <laughs>